Show for you guys, and that's the way I look at it. So, you know, get to fight George is uh, I, I, I just can't. Question for Daniel. It's about Carlos Connor, actually. He's lost two fights in a row, but if you look at his records, fight of the night, fight of the night, knocker of the night, knocker of the night. I mean, as far as the most exciting fighters in the UFC goes, where does Carlos rank? Now, the fight tonight was amazing. I mean, like I said, his fight went all over the place, it was up, it was down, it was exciting on the ground, it was exciting standing up. It was amazing. I mean, it, it, uh, you know, I, I was actually happy that this was the way that it worked out. You know, nothing against Rory, but it's good that it worked out this way because these two are the two number one contenders. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Uh, question for George. During the fight, it seemed like Nick was saying something to you. Hey, George. It seemed like some, uh, during the fight, Nick was saying something to you in the cage. What was he saying to you? I couldn't, couldn't understand. I, uh, the crowd was very loud and... Uh, I couldn't understand my own corner sometimes. It, uh, it was a lot of uh, a lot of noise, you know. So I, and I didn't really pay attention. And just a question for Nick. Nick, start with you. Uh, Nick, you said after the fight that you want to retire. You also said that after the fight, with Carlos. Uh, why do you want to retire from from mixed martial arts? I I just feel like I fought everybody that I set out to fight. You know, like Johnny here, he's a new guy. Uh, you know, Jake's been around for a little while, but. But you know, I just, I just, I feel like I've taken care of everything that I, that I wanted to do in the sport, and uh, yeah, I just, you know, it, this is this is hard stuff, you know. I don't ever get time off. Um, I've only had a year off one time, and it was it was a stress for you. I was, you know, pretty bad out of shape. I didn't win that fight. And I didn't seem, I didn't. Nobody would like reassure me, like, oh, they're gonna give you that fight. They're gonna give you that fight. You know, like I was just sitting around depressed the whole year off, but. You know, uh, like I could sit here and make a million excuses about you know why I wasn't ready for this fight, but I'm just the only reason why I'm here right now is you know I I, I want a rematch. I think I can beat you. That's what I think. But um, you know I think I'm, a, I'm I may be a better matchup for uh, Anderson Silva as well. But we'll you know we'll see what happens. I, I didn't have a I didn't have a good first round or a good performance tonight and. Uh, but I, I carried out a lot of my plan of what I wanted to do. Um, I just think that I could have been a little better prepared for this fight. And I think maybe next time, if I did get an extra shot, that I think that people would, would try to help me out a little bit. And, and Nick, just one more question for you. If you came off a year long layoff, how much did that affect your timing in the fight, especially in the first round? That, the, the layoff, like even the year that I've had off, it was just more just discouraging. Like, you know, I didn't see myself fighting. Um, I retired and then, you know, Dana comes up to me in the middle of a, I was at my, the show with my brother, I think. I think this, yeah, it was my brother for the, uh, the Henderson fight. And then he came up to me and he goes, so you ready for this shit? You wanna do this shit? And I'm like, whoa, what are we talking about? I'm like, why don't you go ahead and talk to Caesar? And, um, that was that, and you know, I'm like, man, I felt like, I felt like everybody knew I had it coming, like Caesar knew I had it coming, everybody knew I had it coming, and then as soon as I had it coming, nobody wanted, it, nobody was around to help me, um, you know, the only ones that came to help me was was uh, my Sambo coach, Gil Castillo, and, you know, Jake, you know, Jake and Gil, they're off, they're on, their, they they can't they can't train hard right now, they got their fights coming up, you know, they've got stuff going on, and they need to have their downtime when it's downtime. I can't go roughing those guys up uh, just because I didn't train. It. So, uh, you know, and I tried to, I tried to bring uh, some good sparring in. I got some great sparring with this kid, Alan Sanchez. And um, and I worked out good with uh, Brandon Gonzalez. I could have, you know, but I, I could have got a lot more days in with these guys. And Kron, Kron came, came came to help me too. He wound up at Gilbert's gym for a week. But he, uh, you know, he knew, he knew that I didn't, <laughs> he knew that I didn't get the right type of training. He was like, well, who did you work out with? And, for the rest of the morning on the ground, but trying to like come up with something to tell him. But you know, I, like I said, you know, I think I could have had a better first round. I could have, uh, I could have, 
played it like I did in the third and the fourth, maybe uh, through the whole fight, and uh, you know, I just got to fight a little more, you know, shake me down and hit me with small punches. But, you know, yeah, he, you know, he put the elbow, he did a great job, you know, and I appreciate, you know, he's a great fighter, and he does what he does to win, and, I, you know, he knows that he, he decided to say, hey, look, you're the guy, and that's why I'm here tonight, and if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have got this fight in the first place, but... Um, I don't. I don't really have anything else to say. And, you know, I'll just leave it. Leave it at that. Hey Dana. It seems that every time you come back to Montreal, the crowd just gets louder and louder, and they become more vocal. And you took, uh, you praised the crowd on how they welcomed John and Carlos into the octagon. What are your thoughts about the Montreal crowd uh, cursing in unison today? Yeah, well, you know when you go to places that have uh, soccer or hockey, you know you expect that kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, everywhere you go, you get a different chance. You know, and uh, yeah, that one was interesting. Glad we were on paper too. Now, uh, when. Uh, Diaz over here, but when he started kind of like hinting about a uh, possible retirement, does that upset you? Because he is a draw, right? And he does, you know, quote unquote, help sell both tickets. It doesn't, it doesn't upset me at all. Um, you know, I said earlier, do I think Nick Diaz should retire? No, I don't think he should retire, but that's not my decision. When a guy starts talking about retirement in this sport, this isn't like baseball or basketball or, you know, any of those other, not to diminish those sports, but... If your head isn't 100% into this game, it's a completely different story. I don't ever question a guy when he talks about retirement. When a guy calls me up and talks about retirement, I don't care how, but if it was George St. Pierre, if George St. Pierre called me up tomorrow and said, I want to retire, I wouldn't go, George, come on, think about this. Let's not do, you know, that, that's their decision, and I don't ever mess with that. Uh, question for George over here, to your right, George. Over here. Um, you said you never really took Nick's antics that personally throughout the process. You said that a couple times tonight, and that the entire time you've always wanted the guy that most deserving to get the shot. If that's the case, then why did you ask for Nick to get the title shot instead of Johnny Hendricks? Because since Nick was coming off a loss, and Johnny was coming off a win. I asked Nick because I thought Nick deserved it more at the time. So I wanted to fight Nick. Nick, he's been there for a very long time. He's a veteran of the sport. I wanted to fight the best, the best guy, and I thought in my book Nick was the best guy ahead of everyone else. And one question for Nick: uh, Nick, did you think he deserved to be penalized for the shot you tried to take at George after the bell? I, I didn't know if I was, but I, I didn't really try to take that shot. I just threw it across his face. I know it sounds like some bullshit, but I, I really wasn't gonna hit with him. I was just being really mean. I was just being really mean out there because I wanted him to try to hurt me, try to finish me. Uh, if you notice, he didn't try to put any side control, didn't try to put two hooks. Um, and, I, you know, I, I, I'm not, maybe, you know, maybe he couldn't do it, or maybe he just was, had a plan to shake me down and shake me down, hit me with small shots, and get the double leg, shake me down, shake me down, hit me with small shots, you know, through the whole fight, and hopefully he can land his elbow. Um, well, she actually, you know, put that across my forehead in the first down, but, in the first round, but, um, you know, I hate to sit out here and make a million reasons why I didn't do well, but you know, I don't know. I just I was trying to time this whole uh, del hours delay between you know the, the U.S. and, you know, and here, and I was I was so confused. I just, I just had some kind of coach tell me, "Listen, you're gonna have to go to sleep, dude," or "You're gonna have to," because I was like, "Should I stay up? <laughs> Should I go to sleep?" And I was like, I slept all the way till eight o'clock today. Thinking like, man, I don't know if that's gonna help me or if that's gonna work against me, but I was like fucking taking a nap out there. I had all this like, like just, my stomach wasn't right. The only time I felt good was when I was out there actually standing across from him. And I was like, all right, maybe I can do this shit. But uh, but I've 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 had you know I've I've been a lot more ready for, for a lot of fights. Nick down here in front. Nick, uh, I need your help here because. Dana came back telling us that you were not going to be here, and then yeah, you yeah, are. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they were so they were trying to. You know, in, in, in after immediately after the fight, he said you were going to return. Yeah. You walk in here, you say you want to fight George, and you want to fight. I want to. Yeah. So, so no, I do. Please I, tell me what I write. I don't. I just don't. I don't. I don't. You know. I don't think they're they're not going to. Come on. He already knows they're not going to pay no pay me no money to fight these guys. You know, I wind up in a fight. 
Carlos again, or, or you know, uh, what, what's that going to do for me? You know, these guys hit hard. They're not joking. You know, they're still trying to, trying to, you know, do this. And I, I've had a lot more fights than most of these guys. Carlos is the number one guy um, that, that they try to batch me up with again. I would imagine, but um, I, I don't know. I have to really uh, go home and think about that and decide on what, what, how that's going to benefit me. Um, you know, but. Uh, I wouldn't hesitate for two seconds to take a fight with with uh, a rematch or or take a not that I'm gonna get not that I even think for a second that that anybody's gonna um, you know give me a rematch but I think I can win I think I can beat you that's what I think but um, you know I think I have a better shot at Anderson Silva too I really do for what you know I don't know it may, it may sound crazy to all these you know wrestling fans out there but it's just. Uh, just what I see is my opinion. Uh, Nick, he actually took the first part of my question. The second part would have been, if you don't retire and you do stay with this, it sounds like you're talking about not being fully happy with, with your team, where you're at. And if you well, did stay with this, what would you do? Would you change teams? Would no, I'm not, I can't be jumping teams. You know, I just have to invest a little bit more. Now that I have a little bit more money, you know, I've never paid taxes in my life. Probably going to go to jail. Um, it's not. That's not because I don't have what you know. Nobody wants to hear about that, huh? Nobody wants to hear about that kind of talk or what's really going on with me. But you know, I might as well just be a kid. You know, I've had fight after fight after fight after fight. You don't know what that does to somebody that didn't graduate high school. You don't understand. Okay, so you know, everybody has to take that. I mean, well, they don't know to do shit, but you take it into consideration for a second. Think about what three fights a year will do to you your whole life. And then the only time you have some time off, it's not like a vacation, it's a very depressing thing every time you're, you're this piece of shit, suspended, uh, you know, you ain't fighting uh, this guy, you ain't fighting that guy, you come back and have to, you know, dance around with a bunch of uh, hard-hitting hard -hitting people. It's, it's, it's just not, it's a, it's a rough sport. So, so what needs to happen now? For you to, for you to, to, to stay in the sport. I'll fight one of these guys. They, he wants to have a rematch. Uh, I don't know why you guys are sitting next to each other. You guys are going to fight. I don't understand. <laughs> you're going to sit right You're going to talk about fighting him like, real quick. I don't think anybody wants to see that still to this day. You know, and I, 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 I watched some of the fight with Carlos here. I thought he did a great job. Versus, versus Johnny here, you know, I hate, I, I hate that he lost. I hate it. I hate it that he lost. You know, because I don't think he, I don't think no offense, I don't think he lost though. I, I just think that the way that the sport is geared towards a wrestler, you know, going on top every round, and uh, you know, Why that it, you, funny? See, it's fucking boring. you watch the Pride FC, which is gone now, disappeared. <laughs> And you gotta punch the guy. You gotta punch. You gotta punch down. Take the elbows out. And if you're gonna make some good punches, it, it makes a lot of space too. So that 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 also makes it a little easier for the guy on bottom when he's not trying to dodge elbows. Then you can make some attacks and do some guard. You know, I know Joe Rogan would like to see some some bottom game, but I don't. I just don't think it's gonna happen when guys are just you know lay, trying to lay flat or trying to sit up for the elbow. But I think there should be like a lot more. You know, try to advance position or stand it up. You know, this is just. Like in we just watch a card show and then be like, action, action, action. And then, you know, there's no elbows. And you can't punch. You can't you get your arm wrapped. You can't punch. They will stand it up. Um, so I, mean, I, I, would, I would like to think that would help a little bit. And um, I don't know. I, I, I'll, I'll make excuses all day, but, you know, I want to, I, I got to do what I got to do. You know, get the fights I want if I'm going to fight. Take one more question. Yep. Uh, Carlos, sure. uh, We've got the last question. Yeah, right here. Uh, I was just wondering what you thought of the crowd sports made. That it sounded like in the middle rounds there they were chanting your name. Uh, just your thoughts on kind of on the opposite side of things this time around compared to the last time you were here. And uh, also maybe what your thoughts are on possibly fighting Nick Diaz at some point. Uh, it sounds so that's quite neat to be open to. Just your thoughts. Um, well, you know, as far as the crowd, you know, I, I was fighting the hometown boy last time, but I still got a good reception. People were still, you know, pumped and, you know, excited to see me fight, which was cool. And th this time around, um, you know, even more so because I wasn't, wasn't fighting a local guy. But, you know, it, it, it was awesome, man. I, I, I like fighting. It was a great fight town. Um, you know, they, they like to see fights, you know, like, you know, fights. You know what I'm saying? Um, but, uh, you know, as far as uh, uh, rematching Diaz, you know what? Um, yeah, you know, that, that's an intriguing matchup also. Um, you know, 
know, there's there's a lot of uh, there, there's a couple of them, you know, a couple of a couple of rematches um, that I'd like, and you know, that that's one I'd be open to. Can I just pass one more for Nick, or who has one more? Nick. <laughs> 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 it's fitting. Yeah. Hey, Nick, you want this question? Right. I think what I can give while I'm here, you never know. This might be. It's all fake, Kevin. Oh. Thank you. Jake, um, Jake Shields tweeted that you had an issue, or the team had an issue with George's raps. Can you explain that situation? They were, they were, they, you know, and, I, and this guy has no punching power. No offense, I'm sorry, you're a wrestler. <laughs> they don't have punching power, okay? Even I he has a full range to punch me from, from the back, right? And, um, you know, I got hit with an elbow, too. That didn't cut me, but something hit me right here, and I didn't wind up with a cut. But not that, I don't know, that's Jay the Jay. He said he had an issue with his wraps. Maybe he had some on his wraps. I don't know. I ain't going to accuse him of anything. I did get hit with one shot that didn't feel like it was hard. I still uh, open the cut on my head. But, you know, I, I just... I, I can talk shit all day, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not finished, I'm not beat up, I'm fight. I'm what, you know, the guy did five rounds, woke me up, and I'm ready to fight. So, uh, that's just how I feel. Thank you guys very much, we appreciate it, have a good night. <laughs> Is a fucking dog in here? Oh, the good job right there. Clown on the whole show. Yeah. Clown on the whole fucking stage. Just clown that whole stage. They're like, don't let this motherfucker in here.